Hi, I'm Gregor and I would like to show you my view of object-oriented design. I like to think of software as a universe of state and behavior. State, whether mutable or immutable, is represented in the form of parameters, return values, vars, fields, files, and so on and so forth. Those have many different traits to them. For example, variables, fields, files, and databases are more location-based, while parameters and return values are flow-based, but they are all state. Behavior is represented in the form of functions. Behavior operates on state. The two are inseparably bound with each other. There is no behavior without state. Try to imagine a program that had no state. No vars, no input, no output, not even lambdas. They generate state. We can't even print a damn thing without passing a string state. Some state is related. If we'd increase the cohesion and move related state closer to each other and behavior towards the state it operates on, groups are emerging. Groups of related parts. Groups of state and behavior. We can wrap them in capsules, which come in many different forms. Functions, classes, packages, modules, processes, and even servers are all kinds of capsules. For each capsule, we define a minimum viable interface. The encapsulation serves the purpose of defining usable units that hide their internals, which are irrelevant to the outside world. We are defining objects, behavioral capsules that interact with each other at runtime. So a function is a form of an object. An instance is a form of an object. A module is a form of an object and even a microservice is a form of an object. Each object is in some way coupled to the neighbors it interacts with. Coupling prevents independent changeability. Objects which are strongly coupled to one another cannot be changed independently of each other. The size of an object's public interface correlates with the strength of this coupling. The more we close the capsule, the more details we hide, the smaller the interface will be, the weaker the coupling will turn out. Sometimes an object accidentally operates on the state of another object. We call that a feature envy, as the object envies the other object. This increases the coupling between the two. We can resolve this situation by moving the behavior to the object that holds the state. When an object knows about another, we call that a dependency. But don't confuse knows with controls. Those are different things. An object can control another object without even knowing it. This is called dependency inversion. Think about a AAA battery. It provides power but it has no idea who it provides power to. The form of the battery, AAA, is its interface. The flashlight knows the battery. It implements its interface. And even though the battery knows nothing about the flashlight, the former controls the latter. Of course, there are many more interesting things to note about object orientation. But I hope this video provides a nice and easy to grasp introduction for you. I'm Gregor, see you next time.